Rogers TV, Brantford. Last night's meeting, you had six candidates who were wearing their campaign buttons, and you see that Rogers made, them all, made us take them all off. Now, a few years ago, you remember the moderator, Tim Philp, took me away for showing my party campaign button because they made up a new rule that said no props, and they enforced it. So I took that case to the Supreme Court of Canada, and the Supreme Court said, well, wearing a button isn't enough reason to deny equal time, but they don't have to give you equal time anyway since 1993 when the Vezina decision ruled that since debates have so many opinions, you don't need them all to stay democratic. And that's why Rogers doesn't have to give us a fair share of time. So what we gotta do is we gotta kick Rogers out of the control booth by the next election and have it run by City Hall. They can have a camera like anybody else, any other reporter in the hall taping the show, but they're not gonna tell us how we do our presentations, what we wear, what we can present, we're going to tell ourselves that, and you're going to be scribes, not controllers. So Please that is up. what I'm going to be talking about. Thank you. Mr. Callan, over to Sean Allen from the Brant News for the first question. And again, we'll return to our speaking order, and Mr. Littell, you will respond first. Hey, everyone. Now, I'm sure that uh, even though you're all running against each other, you can probably admit the fact that we have quite the field of candidates vying for this position at the moment. I mean, there's lots of experience around the table. So we're going to start with uh, what I think Mr. Field was probably right in saying that a minute's probably not enough for, uh, to, to really explain who you are and what you bring to the table. So take another one, separate yourself from the pack, and explain what you're bringing to the table. I want to pay the unemployed and youth with bus bucks, which are basically bus tickets, bus, r bus rides to do community service cleaning the parks, shoveling the snow. I know a lot of poor kids that work for bus bucks. Now, I tried to pass around my flyers. Not one person in this whole audience took it. Not one person, not one adult is interested in jobs for teens, jobs for poor people, okay? Now, you know if you're poor, I got a video at my site, johntermell.com slash busbucks.mpg, which has me asking students at the bus station, would you work for 12 bus bucks an hour? How many of you think said no? None. One lady said, my husband will work for 12 bus bucks an hour. So the point is, there's a way out there to use unused capacity, unused resource that's being lost right now in exchange for community services to reward kids to do useful stuff. And I'm the only guy who's proposing doing that. You'll hear more. Mr. Kellman. Thank you. Now back to our media panel, Danielle Takis. Thank you, everybody. Brantford is in need of an image makeover. That's already been alluded to. Um, for many, image is everything. It can be argued that statistics are misleading, but when they're public and in national headlines, they may as, be, may as well be uh, reality as the effects are so. Just this year, we've made the national news for our downtown, the number of auto thefts, our job market, our income, and our business tax rate, and our city residents being the most pessimistic. How are you going to sell a better image of Brantford? Mr. Tremell. I'm going to get rid of the dog shit on your shoe. I'm going to paste. Excuse me. I'm going to paste. Mr. Tremell. Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Tamell, I'm going to ask you to refrain from using foul language. The doggy do, cigarette butts, dirt, clean the parks. Hey, if they want to clean it so that we don't have to step in it and we can pay them with bus tickets, how is that not smart? How come nobody here sees that? You know, I just don't get it. I asked every kid at the bus station, would you be willing to go clean a park or shovel a snow drift for six bus rides an hour? And they all said yes. And everyone in the room here doesn't care that they could have young people shoving their snow drifts instead of them having to go out and do it. Next question to Sean Allen. Okay, um, Mr. Ferguson, unfortunately, uh, we, okay, can we get uh, a release form signed from Mr. Ferguson? Okay, if you want to come in. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Okay, Mr. Ferguson, I'm being told by the producers that unfortunately, because the debate's already underway. Very sorry about that. Our next question, Mr. Allen. In his uh, outgoing speech, Mayor Hancock said the uh, unanimous decision to seek the injunction was a controversial one and it will be up to a future council to pass judgment on. Um, that future council will have one of you as its mayor, so how do you stand on the, uh, the injunction on a go-forward basis? I would be able to negotiate with more cash, which would have to be better than the guys who have to negotiate with no cash, because when you use a substitute alternative currency in your community, it frees up the federal cash for other things. So by instituting a community currency, Brantford Bucks in Brantford, I would be freeing up a cash component that would let us be able to offer better deals than any of the other boys who don't have an alternative currency could ever offer. Thank you. Now to Danielle Takis. Mayor of the Month, it's existed now for uh, quite some time, but is it necessary? Well, I don't know if I would enjoy being chair full time all the time, and I think the idea of giving other people a chance to have experience is wise. But considering what kind of mayor I would be, which would be mainly saying yes to every project you've organized the men material tools for, and you just need the money, so that how much am I going to have to be around when I just get to cut checks and say okay to all your projects and don't have to say no, because it's the saying no, because you don't have enough money. That's tough. But when you got enough money, saying yes, well, that's not so tough. So these guys got not enough money. They're facing a tough job. I can come up with enough to fill the gap with community currency. I'm going to have an easy job. You all said it, we all know it, we need some jobs, we need economic development in this city. This is only a minute, so let's not spend time lamenting the fact that we need those jobs. Let's get down to brass tacks. What are we going to do about it? Let's hear the ideas. How do we get those jobs? Mr. Tamel? What do you mean you can't find jobs? There are tons of jobs that need to be done. Just no paychecks for those jobs that we need to be done. Well, Al Kewet, old soul cred, used to say, you want jobs, take out the bulldozer, put in 50 men with shovels. You want more jobs, take away their shovels, give them spoons. So it's not the jobs you want, it's the paychecks you want. So running around looking for jobs isn't going to score when you've got to run around looking for paychecks. And when you talk about looking for paychecks to pay jobs, no answers, because they're just looking for jobs. I'm the guy saying, hey, I found a way to cover the paychecks. I'm the only guy who said I found an alternate community to cover the paychecks for jobs, while these guys are just looking for jobs without any paychecks. That's the difference. So, Mr. Kellner? The uh, list of campaign contributors becomes public knowledge after the election, and surely your contributors know this. But many of the people of Brantford feel that it is important for them to know the information of your contributors before they place a vote for you. Will any of you reveal your list of contributors one week prior to the election? My donations will be coming from one source. And honestly, it's, it's not much of a worry to me. It's not much of a worry to me on campaign contributions, so uh, I'm only going to say that I'm going to keep mine light and not to worry. Mr. Kellman. Thanks. Uh, well, talk about all these issues going around, but I think uh, the one that'll, I, I assume you've probably heard it most of the door is taxes. Um, rather than talk about growing the assessment base to, to help stabilize taxes, let's talk about the, the, the budget that the city has in front of them now uh, that's tangible. Do you think there's anywhere for wiggle room to, to get them down or at least uh, to match inflation? 
Well, I've spoken to the stores, three of them so far, Stromboli's, Minuteman, Warner's uh, Martial Arts Academy, and said, will you take 10% bus bucks uh, from the students who are going to shovel your snow? And they said, yes. Now, we could also pay the employees of the buses, drivers, an extra five bus bucks an hour, too. And they seemed to like that idea when I broached it. And we could pay the police and the firemen and the civic employees an extra five community currency dollars per hour hour two, which would certainly lessen any pressure for raises and things like that, but the more bus bucks that they can spend in the stores, the more bus bucks they can pass, the less cash they need. So if the municipal employees like myself were to take maybe 20% of my pay in community currency, that frees up the cash for other uses, like reducing taxes. Mr. Kellner. How are you going to steer the ship of council to build a collaborative atmosphere and get the consensus which is necessary to get things done? All government finance involves borrowing from banks the principal and then promising to return the principal and the interest. Spending the principal you borrowed into circulation, getting things done, and then taxing it out with interest. Now, if you can come up with a component of your budget that you can cover with community currency so that there's enough to spend in and then tax out with no interest, it's like a double budget. You can spend 10 million with regular cash to clear the snow with the plows and 10 million with bus tickets for kids to form gangs to shovel the drifts to get it done three days early. And that means the tax is going to be 10 million in cash and 10 million in bus tickets, less whatever the bus system takes back and earns. So it's, I'm not going to have any problem with collaboration because I got enough money and all the fights are how to allocate. Going to have to cut you off there. Sorry. South side of Colburn Street now ready for new ideas and new investment for the first time in a long time. The final decision to compose uh, the request for proposals for what will go there will no doubt come from some public consultations. Still, the mayor should have some vision of what should eventually be there. So let's hear your ideas. We had some great ones through the ward debates and uh, I'm sure we'll hear some good ones here too. Well, I don't think tearing it down with no plans of what to replace it with was that brilliant of an idea when you put 400 people out of their homes. And, uh, you know, until you actually do come up with some money to build something, you're going to end up with a parking lot or a park. And I prefer the park. This one, you're probably going to want your pens out to write down these things that I'm going to name off. Um, then I'll tell you what to do with them. Investing in economic development, downtown rejuvenation, remediating brownfield areas, implementing the waterfront master plan, tackling the infrastructure deficit. And what we want from you is how you would rank them in your priorities. Number one being your first and number five being down the bottom of the list. And all within a minute. <laughs> and if you have some extra time, maybe some justification or whatnot. Thanks. Starting with Mr. Tamel. Unfortunately, we have to stick to one minute. That's right, okay. I don't have any priorities. Okay? I can fund them all. It's the other guys who have to come up with priorities because they have to decide which they can't fund. So which ones do I cut? That's the mayor's real problem. But I got enough money to fill the gap. I can use the standard budget of cash to do as much as I can, and I can hire people with community currency to do other stuff that they can't do. How can that not be the best? Mr. Look, looking around the room right now, uh, it's very rare to have a, a council meeting. I've been here the last four years covering them all. It's very rare to see the room this full. This in, uh, election has engaged the public big time. At the best of times during during the rest of the term, the city was bragging when we had uh, when we had a hundred people out for for the brownfield or waterfront master plan meetings. That's still one tenth of a percent of the population of the city. Do you have any ways where going forward we can keep the public engaged the way they have been through this election? Well, people have no right to be disillusioned in their politicians. 
The politicians say, we need this, we need that, we'd like you to have this. And they mean it. They'd like you to have it. And you go, boy, he really knows what we need. I'm voting for him. Then four years later, he didn't deliver. And you said, hey, you said you needed it. We needed it. And he said, yeah, I wanted you to have it. I just couldn't give it to you. Well, you people seem to settle for a whole bunch of we needs, we needs, a whole bunch of goals without ever, ever telling you how. Well, how is engineering? And I'm the only engineer. And I'm the only guy who came up with a way to create paychecks. So, yeah, I can do the how. And you don't hear me say, we need this, we need that, we need that, we need heaven. You say, I can build heaven. Next media question, Danielle Takis. During this campaign, there has been a lot of discussion about an agreement about working with the county for mutual benefit and open, opening further communication. Do you remember what I said earlier in dealing with the First Nations, how if you used a funding mechanism, a community service, it would free up federal cash to make negotiations easier? Gee, I guess if I used a community service to free up federal cash, it might make negotiations with the county easier in exactly the same way. And negotiations with anybody else that we're arguing over not enough money with if we have our own community currency to fill the gap, which only I do. So that's why you should vote for me. Mr. Kalman. Mr. Tremell. Well, the first thing I do is say I repudiate my statement that I signed where I said they have the right to libel and defame me, okay? They don't. And if they do, I'm going to sue them like I sued CBC's Dragon's Den. By next time, we want Rogers out of the control room, in the audience like the other reporters, not telling us how we're going to appear, not telling us what presentations we're going to make. So, next time I want City Hall running the debates, I don't want the reporters, Big Brother, telling us our our appearance and our presentations ever again. So back in the audience where you belong and get out of the control room. We want people who understand democracy running debates from now on. Mr. Littell. How do I follow that one? You put up your button. That's what you do. Be bold. Good night. My name is Joe Persia. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.